Here's a picture of a normal glottis. The vocal cords are the upside down V in the center. This is the view we want when we're intubating a patient. Compare that picture to this one. Here, we're looking at narrowing past the vocal cords. That's called subglottic stenosis. So how does this happen? Could be a result of prolonged intubation. If you work with intubated patients, cuff pressure is important. It's easy to overfill the cuff. This can put unnecessary pressure on the tracheal wall. Here's what happens when a cuff is overinflated. This is 10 cc's of air in a syringe that's about the size of an adult trachea. What should the pressure be? All we're looking for is enough pressure to seal the airway. That ends up being 20 to 30 centimeters of water. We can check cuff pressure a couple of different ways. If you have a specialized pressure gauge, you can connect it right up to the pilot balloon. Or even better, you can use a pressure sensing syringe to inflate the cuff. As you inflate the balloon, you can watch the pressure go up. But what if you don't have access to either of those? Here's a do-it-yourself solution with more common equipment. Here's what you'll need. A blood pressure gauge, IV extension tubing, a three-way stopcock, and a 10cc syringe. One important point is that millimeters of mercury are not the same as centimeters of water, but they're close. If you stick to 20 millimeters of mercury, you're still in a safe range. It may sound complicated, but let's walk through it. Connect the IV extension tubing to the blood pressure gauge. Then connect the three-way stopcock to the tubing and syringe with all the ports open. Now you're ready to attach your setup to the pilot balloon and inflate. When you inflate the cuff, you can see the pressure on the gauge. Close the stopcock and disconnect. 